hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are around the world that you are blessed. Well, I'm excited today because we are starting a new series. And this series is called Seven Days of Be Overcoming Your Giants. Seven Days of Overcoming Your Giants. In all of our life, we have giants. There's no one who doesn't in their life. Uh, now, because I'm setting up today, I might just go for a moment or two longer, but in the long run, this, it'll be worthwhile. Um, in all of our lives, there are those areas that defeat us. There are those areas that deplete us, that damage us, destroy us, and cause despair in our life. Every one of us has, has those areas. They take away from who we can be, uh, and they rob us from who we can be. And, and you might say, but life's good. You might say that I'm even successful and I meet a lot of successful people. And the truth is, uh, that'd be right. But are you 100% the person that you thought you would be? All those years ago, when you were younger, if you're older now, did you think when you got to this age that you would be who you are today? Did you think you'd look like you do today? Do you think that life would be what it is? The truth is, is that so, so for so many of us, our giants are not the things we see. They're not the things necessarily that are in front of us. They're not even the things that other people see. But our giants are those things in our life that we know. Those things that we know. Our giants so often are not the obstacles in front of us, but the obstacles that are within us, that prevent us from being the people that we are. Um, uh, experiencing what God calls us to experience is the fullness of life. And yet there are, yet there are many of us who don't. Uh, the, the giants in our life, as I say, can be hidden from someone else, and yet we know it. Uh, now, there's a story in the Bible that talks about giants. The obvious story is the story of David and Goliath. And I haven't got time to read it now in this format, now, uh, but you can go to the, the scripture tab right on the screen right now and you can watch it there. Or if you're watching this through social media, you can go to this address on the screen and it will take you to, to, to the scripture. The story of David and Goliath is a fascinating one. There are two armies, the Philistines and the, people of Israel, and the army of Israel, and they're lined up opposing each other. And this giant man named Goliath steps out of the crowd from the Philistines and he says, hey, send over your best fighter. And what I'll do is I will fight with them and whoever wins will declare that as the winner of the war between the two armies. And for 40 days, Goliath comes out and Goliath calls out to the people of Israel, the army of Israel, to send out their best. But no one comes. No one steps out of the crowd. No one says, I'll come. And in our life, isn't it interesting that sometimes the areas that call out to us call out for days and days. The things that prevent us from being the women, the men that we can be are the things in our lives that no one else knows, but they speak and they speak loudly to us. Your, your Goliath doesn't carry a sword. Your Goliath doesn't carry a shield, um, but, he, but he carries maybe the sword of being unwanted. He carries the sword of, of sexual abuse, of depression, of financial hardship, of unemployment. The sword that so many of us carry are Goliaths, are mistakes we've made in the past. It's defeats, it's addictions, it's compulsive behaviours, it's disasters from your past. It's an unhappy marriage, it's a marriage that ended. It's the memory of a bed you slept in that you shouldn't have. It's an investment that you made that maybe you shouldn't have. It's people you've, who've called you names and it's affected you. It's the voices that within us that deplete us and rob us. Now many of us can stop and say, but I'm a lot older now than when those things, some of those things happened to me. But the truth is, in my experiences, they never go away. The hurt in people in their 70s and 80s and 90s is as evident to me as it is to those when I did youth work years ago and I listened to teenagers who cried over people calling them names and not doing things. It never goes away. It depletes our marriages, it depletes who we are, and it depletes our happiness. It's the jobs we failed out, it's the children we didn't raise right, it's the, it's the memories of parents who hurt us, it's the effect of an economy that we have no control over. There are giants in the land, and those giants are in our lives. When Jesus led the people uh, out of, when, well, sorry, when Moses led the people out of Egypt, they were led to a place that God said was going to be a land flowing with milk and honey, 
But when the spies went in, they wouldn't go in and they came back with this report. There's giants in the land. They'll get us. They'll kill us. We have no hope against them. Today, there are many Catholic and Christian people who today, their lives are depleted for this one reason, that there are giants from our past that stomp through our lives right now, exactly in the place where we are, that are robbing us of life. And we can stop and we can say to ourselves, well, I'll work harder, I'll strive more, I'll, 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 be, I'll give more. And we can convince ourselves even that we're all okay and we can point to someone else and say, well, the issue's for them, it's not for me. And then we realise in time that those don't make sense. They don't add up. So what do we do? So how do we go? Well, I can't answer it all today, but I can answer some of it. When we, look at, when we look at David, David came down to bring some wheat, some grain, some bread and some cheese to the two armies that were opposing each other. His father had sent him by, down. His three older brothers were in the army. And he was told to go and bring them and then also to see if there'd been anything that had been conquered of the opposing army and to see if there was any booty that he could bring home to his father. And when he gets down there, he hears of this Goliath coming out and calling them out over and over and over again and no one going forward. See, the army of Israel, they were worried about their safety. The army of Israel were worried about their ability. They were worried about their strength. They were looking for their strong man. They were looking for what resources they had, but they didn't have it. But David, he doesn't see it that way. Now, if you look at this scripture uh, on the screen, it says in 1 Samuel 17, verse 26, it says, And David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? On nine occasions we see that David turns to God and he says, what is God saying? Where the people of Israel all look to themselves, all look within, all look with what we had. But David not once did. David said, who has God declared us to be? The answer in part to overcoming our giants, well, the answer in all completely, but there's some steps to take, is that we need to turn to God. And we need to ask ourselves, who has God declared me to be? Whatever your name is, whether it's Adam or Mary or Peter or Philip, you know, whatever your name is, what did God ordain for you? And what has been robbed from you? In these next seven days, that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell a bit of my story, how my giants in my land robbed of my life but that is not the case today and that doesn't have to be the case for you David is the answer so go to this scripture go to the scripture tab or go to this address on the screen it'll take you there and we'll read that story and tomorrow we'll come back and we'll take up where do we go from where we are today loving father we thank you today that you're with us we pray today that you speak your word right into our heart that you would talk to us that, Lord, the uncomfortableness that we all feel right now in the depths of us that we may not share with anyone else is your voice. Come and heal our lives and heal us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow.